Hello everyone, welcome back to Stratrise Finance. Finally, after months of thinking about it, I finally decided to close my M1 Finance account and transfer out of it. In this video, I want to go over the reasons why I decided to move out of M1 Finance, how to go about it, the whole process of transferring out of M1 Finance, and what's next in my portfolio. Let's check it out. The whole idea behind me creating my M1 Finance portfolio more than two years ago was that it provided me something called PICE, where you create what all stocks and ETFs you want to invest in, how much you want to invest in, and that's it. m and Finance would take care of all the investing according to whether any particular position is overweighted or underweighted. That means automatic rebalancing. It is like setting up your own ETF and let m and do its thing. It was meant for buy and hold investors and not for the traders, which resonated with me in the right way. The whole idea of dynamic rebalancing provided you with a hands-off model wherein your funding was automated, it gets directly from your bank account and let M1 do the investing and you could just get on with your life. The issue that I found after using M1 Finance for more than two years is that the buy system works well for somebody who wants to manage, let's say 20 to 25 securities, like example, stocks or ETFs at once. Like I said earlier, the dynamic rebalancing would take care of which security to invest into and not. But if someone were to just invest into an S&P 500 ETF like BOO, M1 Finance makes absolutely no sense. Instead of having, let's say in this example, we can see two ETFs and three stocks. Instead of that, if you just, let's say, have one ETF, VOO for the, for the US-based stocks, and let's say VXUS for the international, you don't need to create a pie for it. You don't need the way M1 works in that situation. Another issue that I had was the trading windows that M1 Finance provided. For free members, all you could do was invest right at the start of the investing day. That's at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. Pretty much everyone knows that the first 15 minutes, or in fact, 15 to 30 minutes of it, any trading day is the most volatile session. And what M1 does is it places a market order. So in a volatile trading window, I've often observed that the price at which M1 bought the stock could have been much, much better. At the least, if M1 could avoid the first 30 minutes of the trading day, set up a trading window like, let's say, 10 a.m. Eastern time, that's much, much better. Now, they do offer an afternoon trading window at 3 p.m. ET, but that's only for M1 Plus numbers. You have to pay extra for it. Now, here at 3 p.m., which is like one hour before end of trading session, is a better opportunity. The stocks get more volatile into the close than at one hour before the end of session. So why can't one just give something like 10 a.m. Eastern or 10.30 a.m. Eastern? It never changed. I often felt the best M1 Finance could do was to follow the four trading window that Stash provides. If you have your orders ready by 9.30 a.m., the orders execute at 9.45 a.m. Likewise, you have your orders ready by 11.30, you have your orders executed at 11.45. The third window at 1.30 p.m., where the orders execute at 1.45 p.m. And last one, at 3.30 p.m., the orders execute at 3.45 p.m. Now, I'm not saying Stash is the best investing platform out there. In fact, I moved out of Stash last year. I made a video about it. But this is one nice feature that I really appreciated about Stash all the way that I was using it. Because in a given day, limiting the customers just to one trading window like what M1 does, I felt it was a very bad way to do. Stocks fluctuate through the day. What if I want to buy something later in the day rather than at the start or at the end? Like what you see here in Stash, it gives us two other trading opportunities. In fact, I should not say trading, investing opportunities. I felt this is one big thing which M1 could have done but have not done yet. I'm not sure if they want to do it in the future. Other than that, pretty much M1 has always been a static app with no new features that kept rolling in. I've used it for two and a half years and always felt that was same now, just as it was two years ago. In fact, I know people who use the margin feature appreciate M1 for the low interest rates and stuff, but I'm not a margin user. In fact, someone who doesn't know what margin is should not even attempt to have the feature enabled. And one other personal, the main reason which made me move out of M1 was that I wanted to monitor my portfolio much closely generate income out of my portfolio using options. So M1 Finance, from the beginning, they have never been meant for options. So I accept the fact, I appreciate that. Nothing against M1 for that, but that's a personal choice. And that's what prompted me to move all my holdings out of M1 Finance so that I can consolidate them into one place. 
Hi, so I keep sharing in my month end portfolio videos. I have my M1 finance portfolio, I have my affiliate portfolio, and also my accounts portfolio. So I wanted to consolidate my M1 finance and affiliate into one place, and that's what I did. So let me show you how I went about the process of transferring all my M1 finance assets into affiliate. So this is how my M1 finance portfolio looked right before starting the transfer process. The overall value was just under $24,900. Now this portfolio was started at the starting of February of 2021, and including the dividends earned in this portfolio, the overall value was uh, almost 3.3% in the green. So first of all, we start the whole process from the affiliate transfer page. I'll provide a link to this page in the description notes. So here, you just go all the way down and click on start a transfer. Now here is where we need to choose uh, which particular brokerage are you moving the transfers. We select M1 Finance, so that will be the first one with Apex Clearing. Click on Next. Now, here you need the most important thing that is your account number. So, here we would provide that account number and select the account type, which in this case is individual. So, the next page will ask you whether you want to open a new account or move into an existing account. In my case, because I already have a affiliate account, I wanted to move it in. The next page will ask you if you are moving the whole account or a partial transfer. So in a partial transfer, you can actually select which particular stocks you want to move over, which particular positions or holdings you want to transfer. In my case, it was a full transfer. So here they would ask you to upload the account statement on the last page. So here you can just recheck the details, whether the account number itself is correct. And finally, you click on submit. So after starting the transfer process, in a day or so, when M1 receives the transfer request from Fidelity, you would see this particular message popping up on your account. It says the account is currently paused, thanking you for trying it out, blah, blah, blah. In my case, when I started transferring the account, it was July 17th, and this was by July 19th, so in two days' time. So on that day, when I saw the message pop up on my one portfolio saying the account was paused, in fact, I also got an email from them saying that if I stayed with them and canceled the transfer, I would be given a $250 as promotional retention credit with the condition that my portfolio should stay about 25,000 for the next 12 months. In fact, I also got a call from M1 Finance regarding the same, asking me why am I moving out and stuff. I explained my reasons and that's it. I did nothing else. I just let the process take over. So when I started the transfer process on July 17, I was given an estimated completion of July 24. That's like seven days, but it actually took much more than that. I did reach out to Fidelity customer care asking, hey, why is the delay and stuff? They said that M1 Finance was delaying the transfer process. In fact, I did hear about this in a few of the Reddit chats saying M1 Finance does try to slow down the process and stuff. I'm not sure how much truth is into that. I just decided to wait a little longer. And finally, after a few days towards the end of the month, I could actually see M1 taking some steps towards the transfer. How do I know it is, Whenever you do this transfer of assets, they only do whole shares. If you have any fractional shares in your portfolio, they get sold off. So I could see that happening in my portfolio. Wish I had taken some screenshots of it for showing you guys. And finally, on August 1st is where I could see the transfer trickling in. So we can see almost $900 coming in. That's because of the sale of those fractional shares that I had in the portfolio. Then the $100 transfer fee. And after that, all the portfolio holdings that I had in M1 Finance slowly got moved over to Fidelity. Here's the entire list of them. I had all my stocks and ETFs. So everything got moved over on August 1st. I don't know, for some reason, Arbor Realty and Medical Properties got held up and got moved over on August 8th, followed by few more transfers. These are all the dividends that I had received into the M1 portfolio for whatever exit dividend dates that I had in July. I did call up the Fidelity customer care to check on my reimbursement of the transfer fee, which they gladly did. So here we can see the $100 reimbursement. So before the transfer, my portfolio in Fidelity was close to $40,600. After the transfer, we can see the portfolio shoot up to over $65,000 here. And I'm making this video towards the end of the month. So we can see the portfolio went down in value towards the middle of the month along with the whole market and that uh, slowly started to rise back up. So yeah, with that, now I just have two portfolios to look at. One is my Fidelity portfolio and the other one is my Acons portfolio. So simple, Acons is self-driven. I have nothing to do with it. I just set my weekly 
transactions and the roundups, which I always share with you guys uh, in the monthly videos. It's an autopilot, whereas Fidelity is my personally managed one. So the whole purpose of me getting into Fidelity over here is that I can actually consolidate my positions. You can, you, you'd see my, I own a lot of holdings. I really want to consolidate all my holdings into one place. I had a few holdings which were like an overlap between M1 and Fidelity. I wanted to consolidate them. This gives me a chance to do that. And also Fidelity has my 401k accounts. It has my Roth IRA. So having the, your whole investment portfolio at one brokerage actually helps rather than being them at different places. As the market continues to get better, hopefully as we go into the end of the year, I'll get a chance to consolidate a lot of positions and that will give me a chance to actually have close to 100 shares into a few positions for which I can raise my covered calls and raise extra income and have that extra income invested back into the portfolio. And that's what I want to create my own snowball effect. I've been sharing my options income videos with you guys over the last few months. Like I said, MN is still a good platform for someone who is fine with just having limited investment windows during the day for someone who is just uh, wants to like select the holdings and let MN do what it does. But for someone who wants a little more of an active management into the portfolio, I feel M1 is not something good for them. If you look at something like Fidelity or Charles Schwab, where they can invest anytime during the day, they can set limit orders. The moment we talk about uh, choosing a time to invest, means you're really spending the whole day in front of the monitor. No, you can set limit orders. Rather than when the stock hits that mark, the investment is completed. So there are many things with, that M1 can do to enhance user experience. Instead of enhancing the features in the M1 investing app, they're all behind uh, promoting the credit card and that too for the plus members who have to pay 125 bucks every year. I would say rather than that, simply go for the Fidelity credit card, 2% cash back, no limits. So your cash back from your purchase gets invested back into your portfolio. They by default get uh, invested into your Fidelity money market fund, the SPAXX which currently has a 4.91% yield. You choose where you want to invest that money. So that's all I have in this video for you all. If you found it valuable, and if so, please do click on that like and subscribe button so that YouTube can share this video with many more people out there. And that would really help this young channel. Until we meet in the next video, try to do as much as possible to be financially healthy and keep taking those small strides towards financial freedom. See ya. Bye.